Hey everybody and welcome to a special video, something I don't normally do. We are going to be doing a little bit of improv, but more specifically a little bit of solo improv because I have been exploring improvisation um, for a couple days now, getting real deep in the research and uh, even getting with my cousin Cody a few times, Dankus Khan, and we did some improv scenes and the reason I've been doing this is to improve my banter in the dark and cozy videos as well as all of my solo content. And honestly, all, all around, it's been a really fun experience. Uh, one of the things I learned about improv is that you just become more creative as a person and you're easier to be around in general. And the reason for that is because of improv's biggest rule called yes and. What a yes and is, is whenever you're doing improv and one of your actors or friends, whoever you're doing improv with, wants to do a specific thing where they say anything at all, you have to agree to it and add to it. So yes and. Um, the reason for that is, let's say you start a scene and someone is like, I'm flying. And then, you know, you walk and then you're in the scene as well and you're like, no, you're not. Well, the scene literally just died. Um, I'm sure there's specific ways to get out of it. You know, like the other actor could be really, really good at what they do and be like, oh, you know I hate it when you say, like, interrupt my fun or something like that. It's possible to get out of it, but it can ruin a lot of scenes and it's just a lot funner to agree to it. So, you know, it's like, yes, I'm flying. And then you have the other person being like, dude, that's freaking awesome. How did you do that? All of a sudden, uh, you know, the whole scene's more optimistic and it's easier to go from there. Um, but right in front of me, I've got um, from hugetheater.com, I have some solo improv exercises, and I have not done any of these. This could go terribly, I have no clue. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through as many of them as we can, and uh, I encourage you to do it as well at home, but you know, you don't have to, and uh, we're going to see what's going on here. I haven't read any of these, I think I read the first one and that's it. All right. Uh, number one, walk around a place naming things the wrong name. An example, point at the chair and call it a soda fountain. Okay, we can do that. Um, but obviously I can't walk around super far. I've only got my room here if you guys want me to continue to actually record. So I have a bunch of stuff on my desk. We'll go from there. All right, uh, round one. Let's do it. This is a telephone. This is a soda can. This is a squirrel. This is balanced. These are grapes. This is a GameCube controller. This is a pair of scissors. All right, so that was the first one. Let's move on to the second one. Do a crossword puzzle. We're not going to do that. Uh, here we go. Close your eyes and turn your head in any direction you'd like. Open your eyes and look at what's in front of you in the frame of your vision. Appreciate it like it's a painting or a photograph. Someone deliberately composed. Try to analyze the symbolism and the artist's intent. That's really cool, and it's going to be really hard for you guys to see what I'm looking at on this one. So you know what? I'll turn around. This is what you guys are going to see. Okay? That's what I'm going to see. So here we go. I'm going to move the mic a little bit so you guys can hear me. Okay. So the artist has it in balance because I'm directly lined up with the corner of the room. Um, it's dark. And you know, you've got that orc there. You've got the angel of death on the right hand side. I'll let you guys look again, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but, but you've also got that like real modern fan in the corner of the room as well. So it might be kind of the contrast of the old gritty, dark, scary stuff mixed with uh, the modern of the fan. Of course, then again, it also has the computer chair there as well. Um, and it's like, 
more close to us than the rest. I don't know, I think it's just a really cool picture that kind of shows modern gaming. Alright, cool. That was a fun one. That was easy. Well, I thought it was easy. Alright. The next one is brush your teeth with the wrong hand. Obviously, I can't do that, but that's funny. Um, Alright, this next one. Reach into space with your hands and grab an invisible object. Grab first, then look in your hand to see what it is. Notice all the details, set it down, reach into space, and grab something again. Okay. Whoa. I have a big, great sword. It's not new, though. You can see that it's been used in battle. The sides of it have little kinks in it. Plus, the metal is very scratched. You can tell it's had a lot of time in battle. The hilt's not bad. It's kind of heavy in my hand, but... Yeah, the hilt isn't bad. It leaves kind of a nasty smell on your hand. But, hell yeah, we got a great sword on the first grab. Let's grab another one. Oh. This time we got a really ice cold sundae. It's got a straw in it in case it starts to melt. That's smart. We got a cherry on top, on top of the whipped cream there. Uh, it's vanilla, which is good because vanilla is my favorite. And it's got sprinkles. Uh, it's really frosting my hand. I kind of want to put it down because it's, you know, really cold on my hands. Um, but I'm just really excited to eat it because I've been on a diet and this looks really freaking good. Ooh. All right. We got a grocery bag. Let's see what's in there. It's making the, the crinkly noises because it is one of those plastic ones like the Walmart ones you might see. Reach in there. What did they get? Got an orange. Well, an orange is good. I love the smell of oranges. Okay. What else is in there? Oh. I think they wanted to use that later. We'll just put that <coughs> uh, down right there. Uh, Alright, there we go. Cool. What else we got? Okay, cool. It looks like we got a little thing of straws. It's got like a, a band around it, like one of those cardboard bands, and it's got like the logo and stuff on the side. That's cool. Okay, I need that for something. And a hat. Kind of a weird hat. Um, what's on the front of it? Oh, it's got like a baseball team on the front. It's kind of red and white. Interesting. Cool. All right, cool. All right, that, that one was fun. I like that one. Because I could do whatever I wanted. And on the last one, I kind of took the idea of grabbing random things and went hardcore with it. Which was an accident. But that's where the improv took me. And I yes handed myself and I had to keep going. Um, which was, you know, I instead of space, now I'm grabbing it out of a bag. So I had to keep going with that. Um, take a wrong route home. Can't do that one. Draw a terrible picture of a bunny and mail it somewhere. Wait. That has to be a thing. I need to Google that later. We're not we're not gonna do that though. Uh here is a variation of the game. What are you doing? Find two initials in the room you are. In the room you are. That's that's wrong. Like L B. Then make a little verb, objective, or whatever out of it. Okay, so we need to find some initials. We got GG here. Obviously GG stands for Good game. Uh, however, uh, for our sake, GG now stands for George. George George. Um, George George, obviously known for um, his his hand in uh, freeing the slaves, a little bit lesser known than Abraham Lincoln. But George George did a really good job um, at a lot of the political stuff that was behind the scenes. Um, let's see if we can't find another set of initials real quick. HW, um, obviously HW stands for um, Haley Withers. Uh, Haley Withers uh, being one of the current members of Congress. She does a really good job at fighting for both sides, actually. You don't see that very often on Congress, but that's the thing is Haley is not one of those normal people. Haley has always been kind of off. I mean, even as a kid, you know, whether she wanted a dog or a cat, well, no, she wanted both. 
Uh, it didn't matter. Like, if it was something that a lot of people are decisive on, or divisive rather, she always uh, wanted both. So, honestly, she's kind of a good person to have in Congress because having both those angles uh, fighting at the same, like, inside of you, probably a good thing. Um, tell a one word story where you blink to separate the thoughts. Okay, okay, here we go. I gotta tell a one word story, and between each word, I have to. I have to blink, okay. And I'll, I'll look at the camera for this one so you guys know I'm doing it correctly. <clears throat> the goldfish jumped at the supermarket. That's two words. The supermarket. He was, he went there to buy fish food, but he realized they had none. He swam to the counter to ask about getting more. And that's all I got. I, I, I could have kept going, but I, I I I don't I don't really know the benefit of that one. I don't know if I like that one that much. Uh, because even though I had to blink between each word, which I think the whole idea of blinking between each word is to try to reset your brain, try to take everything that you normally would do in like a normal sentence and then break it up so you have more time to think so that way maybe it changes how you think but i was still thinking really far ahead so i don't know if i really like that one or not all right let's see what else we got here uh do four little mini character monologues with the same first line of dialogue okay four different characters with the same first line of dialogue uh ooh, i've got i've got it because we're on youtube let's, let's just do it <clears throat> The best way to get subscribers is that'll be the that'll be the intro that'll be the intro to all four of these characters. Uh, so the first character is gonna be an old guy, an old guy that's uh, doing uh, his his crafting hobby. <clears throat> the best way to get subscribers, I've noticed, is to use crafting materials that have a lot of color. The more color that's in your video, the more you can keep them interested. And in your thumbnail, since you're already using a lot of colors, you will have, you know, a very easy to make thumbnail that's very interesting to the eye. Uh, the next character will be a bigger lady and she is trying to sell knitting things. The best way to get subscribers is Apparently, she has an accent as well. The best way to get subscribers is I like to use a very certain type of thread. There's different types, but I use the real fuzzy type. Um, a lot of people know the name of it. I always forget the name, the real fuzzy type of thread. But this is the stuff people want. It's more comfortable on the skin, and therefore they want to wear it. What happens when they wear it? Other people see it. They want it, they come to your channel and subscribe. All right, the third character is going to be, uh, let's just do like a regular gamer YouTube guy. <clears throat> the best way to get subscribers on your YouTube channel is to be consistent. You gotta make sure you're pumping out 87 videos a day. You're not allowed to sleep. Got kids? Not anymore. You have to be consistent. You need to be funny. You need to be uh, entertaining. You have to be loud and scream. And you have to say, hit that motherfucking like button. <laughs> All right. And then the fourth character, let's do something completely left field. If the devil had a YouTube account. I'm just going to use a real low voice. There we go. <clears throat> The best way to get subscribers on YouTube is to torture all the people that deserve it. We're talking about the... I was about to say an actual name, and we're not going to do that uh, for the sake of this video. I almost got myself in trouble. 
but I didn't go there. Uh, I realized quickly that if the devil's torturing somebody, they need to deserve it. And therefore, no matter who I say, it could be for fun or it could be for real, I'm making a huge statement. So we're not gonna do that. But we did three of the characters and I started the fourth until we had that cataclysmic failure. Um, is that all of them? No, it's not, okay. Put on your headphones and dance around to your favorite song completely unleashed and free of inhibition.